Welcome to Public Comment. I'm Council Member at Large Derek Green and I thank you for joining me. Since we were last here together, members of the newly established school board were installed and are now overseeing our city's locally controlled public schools. The 2018-2019 academic year is now in full swing and many people are wondering how are things going? School Board President Joyce Wilkerson is here to give us an update when public comment returns. Hi, I'm composer Dr. Louis Anthony DeLise, and you're watching PHL Go TV. Welcome back to Public Comment. It's hard to believe that we're already halfway through October and school is well underway. As many of you know, our local schools are back in local control and we're really eager to know what's been the progress and find out what's going on with our schools. With us today, we have School Board President um, Joyce Wilkerson, who really brings us up to speed on what's happening with our schools. Ms. Wilkerson, welcome to Public Comment. Thank you. Now, you cast one of the deciding votes in transitioning the School Reform Commission to our locally controlled schools. How has the transition been? The transition has been exciting. Um, one of the big upsides is that we have more people at the table now. The School Reform Commission only had five members. Now we have nine, and that's made possible a committee structure we didn't have before. So we have four active committees. We have a committee on policy, a committee on student achievement and support, a committee on facilities and finance, and then our last committee is a committee on public engagement, and that's just made a world of difference. Um, now, with these new committees, I know one of the concerns I would hear from people regarding the School Reform Commission where they felt somewhat of a lack of transparency. But it sounds with our new locally controlled school board with these committees that provides opportunity for more transparency. We have the committees, you know, we're still fiddling around with the time the committees meet, but all of our proceedings are broadcast. Um, the public is invited because they're public meetings and we want to hear from people. Um, but it's also an opportunity to have an exchange. You know, one of the things that frustrated people with the SRC is we would sit, sit there <laughs> <laughs> and people would come and right. they, you know, they'd have questions or concerns or they were angry because of something that wasn't going right. And we would just sit there stony face. It really, it was a business meeting. It, there really wasn't an opportunity for dialogue. And we've structured our committee meetings to afford the public an opportunity for dialogue. We're also taking a much deeper dive at issues. So by the time things would reach the SRC public meeting, you know, there was a lot of, a, not necessarily a lot of conversation, but there was a lot that undergirded it and nobody knew what that was. We explore those issues now in our committee meetings. And so if you, you know, there'll be a detailed conversation a couple weeks ago in our finance and facilities uh, committee about leveling. You know, moving teachers from classroom to classroom after the school year has begun. You know, you never had that opportunity for a conversation about issues like that. And so, you know, we're really excited about that committee structure and it's a huge difference. Well, it clearly sounds that the new school board really wants to have the public engaged by having these committees and provide an opportunity for a give and take. 
But when you have these expectations of having a locally controlled school board that raises expectations, uh, how are the school board trying to meet these expectations of a new uh, school system with a local control? We're, one of the things that we focused on, one of our priorities is really upping the quality of all of our schools. And so we're doing that through um, careful review of the administration, you know, Dr. Hyde's priorities, um, setting goals, you know, that we expect to see achieved. Um, we'll continue some of the work of the SRC, you know, that there are some good things that happened. <laughs> and so we're going to continue the, um, the teacher training, you know, we're going to continue making improvements in the classrooms to make them 21st century classrooms. Um, so, we're, you know, we're trying to be very focused about it and invest money in things that that um, that drive up a student achievement, but we're going to be candid about it. There are going to be some, you know, tough conversations, <laughs> and um, I think everybody, you know, has to just be honest about where we are with public education and and what the aspirations are. There was a time when people were just, you know, or you'll hear it still that you know at least my kid is safe. That's not good enough. You know, our children deserve more than that. Sounds good. Now, we talked about a transition from the School Reform Commission to now the school board, which is locally controlled. How has that transition occurred with Dr. Height when he was dealing with the SRC, or School Reform Commission, now dealing with a much larger body, uh, which is the school board? I, th I think it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a transition. You know, he's, you know, it'd be interesting to hear his take on it, but he's, he's got to, you know, the board, First of all, the board, you know, are not your usual suspects, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of educators on the board, people that bring uh, a wealth of experience from different sectors to the board and are asking a lot of questions. So he has people assigned um, as liaisons for all the committees, you know, so we try to stay aligned. It doesn't serve anybody's purpose to have <laughs> warfare between the superintendent and the board. Um, but, you know, it, it's a transition for him. But I, I think in the long run, um, we'll, you know, he'll see us as, as allies, you know, that we're all, we all want improved education, quality education for our kids. We all want schools in every neighborhood. We, you know, we all want to better align with city services. And, and so we'll work out the relationship. <laughs> but, um, you know, there, it's a change. It's a transition process. Now, you've played a role in a numerous leadership positions here in the city of Philadelphia, from chief of staff to former mayor John Street, and a whole host of very significant positions in the city of Philadelphia. How have these past positions really prepared you for your current role as president of the school board? Well, as Mayor Street used to say, I don't have skin, I have hide. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, I, you know, I think I've, I've got, I value, you know, the give and take, mm -hmm. you know, the sharp elbow, you know, because I, I think that's that part of public engagement, you know, there's, you know, there's, it's, it's not always easy, but there's something to be said. I also have a really profound understanding of how the various pieces fit together. Um, one of the things that that um, we began exploring under the SRC was increased support and alignment between the city and the public school system. I think there are huge opportunities there. Um, Philadelphia has um, the, the Behavioral Health HMO, CBH. Mm -hmm. There are resources there that are invaluable to the kids in public schools, and if we can get those tightly aligned, I think it can make a huge difference. Our children are bringing enormous challenges, you know, to school every day. And teachers can't deal with that and also educate kids. And, and so if we can get alignment and use some of those resources. So I have, you know, I have a sense of all the city resources. I have a sense of the give and take. Um, I understand, you know, the political process. <laughs> a little, <Just> a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> insight into the life you lead. <laughs> You know, and, and all of that, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're not an isolated institution mm -hmm. or we shouldn't be an isolated institution at, at the school district. And so, you know, figuring out how all those pieces fit together is critical. Okay. And I have some experience. And you do have some experience. So, so th Ms. Wilkerson, thank you for being with us. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. We're looking forward to great things coming from uh, the school board going forward and really providing some more information and how we can work collectively to provide the best education for the students in the, well, in the city of Philadelphia. Look forward to that. I think that returning to local control and having the city feel responsible for the kids. There are kids. They're not Harrisburg's kids. There are kids. Um, so we look, look forward to being open and candid and, and getting back with you. Right. And having a lot of public comment. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. And so coming up next on Public Comment, we'll have our social media segment. Stay tuned. It's time to get into our social media session. Here are a few topics that I'm interested in getting your input on. Question one, what measures would you like to see the city take against domestic violence? From Facebook, Maureen Breen states, men like yourself in office need to speak to women and tell them to report domestic violence and provide an immediate safety net for someone who reports. The city has a partnership with Project Home for the Homeless, but we need something equivalent for victims of domestic violence. Question two, gun violence continues to be a scourge in many of our communities. Short of changing state gun laws, what other changes would you like to see? From Facebook, Christine Torsivia states, in my opinion, every social media issue is directly related to healthcare and education. People who are secure about their health and educational needs are less likely to use violence and more likely to understand the importance of voting. And our final question, how else do you feel we can make an impact in voter turnout and ensuring that everyone votes on every election day? Dylan DeGlow states from Facebook, add more locations, add mail, and I post a list of polling locations on local TV because people who haven't voted don't know where to go. Also explain the voting process. On the next public comment, we'll talk new year and new budget. That's a wrap for this edition of Public Comment. I appreciate our guest, School Board President Joyce Wilkerson, for taking the time to stop by. And thank you, my fellow Philadelphians, for watching. Remember, every vote counts and every election counts. I'm Council Member Derek Green, and I'll see you next time.